<laughs> hey, good evening. And uh, it's me and Diana. And uh, oh, there's Paulette showed up. Yeah, so uh, we're good to see you. We, we just get started on time. And uh, I'm usually early than most. I come in half hour to 15 minutes early and do some worship music. And I couldn't get it quite working today, but had some worship mob going and Jesus image and some different stuff. It was really good stuff. So anytime you want to come around, come in early and we'll sit around worship and, and see what happens. Have a little chat pre uh, meeting chat and worship. And I've just been doing that for a long time, but, but good to see you guys. And uh, this is recording for our Patreon group on, uh, on, on site there. And tonight is like, it's just, I had this overwhelming, you know, impact from God. It's almost this explosion that happened within me about the verdict. I talk about the verdict. And, you know, a lot of people are missing the verdict. They, some, you know, it's over the 10 or so years I've been doing Courts of Heaven. <clears throat> you hear a lot of different ways people do things. <clears throat> and uh, whatever works is the best way for you. But I hear, hear a lot of people that go into the courts and they pray a prayer and then that's over. <clears throat> but to me, the courtrooms of heaven is a actual court legal system uh, designed much like the court systems in the natural here on earth. So it follows a lot of the, well, we're a, we're a mirror image here, what happens there. So, so uh, that's the way I teach. I teach uh, the legal system uh, as a mirror image according to the the courts of, of the earth. Uh, so in that, I use Black's Law Dictionary a lot. <clears throat> and that's a, a document, a book that a lot of uh, uh, attorneys actually use. Black's Law Dictionary is a app you can get. I don't know if they charge a little bit, but I, you can just type in Black's Law Dictionary. And you know that's where I got some uh, things for the verdict but this is going to go in a little bit different route i'm going to cover some things according to black's law dictionary in the beginning and i hopefully uh levita will come and tap in and share some of her being an attorney come in and share some of her thoughts about the verdict rendered but we have to get to that point where we hear the verdict not just go in there and pray pray a prayer have to answer the accusations we have to present evidence we have to have witnesses, and then we have to have the verdict, and then we have to work out the verdict. You ever listen to Mike Parsons? He talks a lot about working out the outworking of our verdict, which is very important. And we're not going to necessarily talk about that, but it's just really in obedience to whatever he says to do after the verdict is released. In other words, uh, attorneys in the natural world say, unless uh, there's an agency to enforce a verdict, nothing changes. So you have to become that agency that enforces the verdict. That's what we stand on. That's what we de governmentally declare and decree as a legislative judicial son, that verdict that is rendered in the heaven every time the enemy wants to come in and try to say that didn't work or the courtrooms of heaven uh, uh, is, a, is a crock, you know, and, <clears throat> and different things that that want to try to convince you that nothing is working. I put a post out the other day that that uh, had a scripture on it. I don't have it right now, but just because we don't see an immediate answer does not mean we are not making headway. Uh, the word says, little by little, I drive out the, the enemy, lest the wild beasts come back in and take over. So there's this process. If there's a deeply rooted issue that has to be worked out, or the outworking of our verdict uh, for the fullness of the manifestation of the verdict to come. And so, but we're going to go in a little bit different direction uh, tonight. And so the definition is interesting of a verdict. I've got the definition from several different uh, dictionaries, including Black's Law Dictionary. And the first one is a decision. A decision on a disputed issue in a civil or criminal case or inquest. Number two, an opinion or judgment. 
Number three, an opinion made after judging facts that are given. Now, I want to begin us to begin to look at, not in a court case, but how are we judging? That's where we're going to go to in the end of this. How are we making unrighteous judgments? And how are we rendering unrighteous verdicts? Because 1 Corinthians 6 says, Don't, do you not know that you'll judge the world and judge the angels? In other words, you have your own court system. When you're entrusted by Yahweh, the righteous judge, to, to govern on his behalf as an, as an ambassador, all of a sudden, with your experience and your knowledge and your wisdom and your, your, the other things that, that you've come in to learn about uh, the judicial system of heaven, you are given your own court system. You are the court system. You're the governor. You're the governor. You're the governmental, legislative, and judicial son. And so it's kind of the way we're going to go on this tonight, not so much the natural courts, but uh, some of the courts. Uh, I, you know, I read these just de definitions, and Timothy Bentz told me a long time ago, he said, well, a judgment is only, it, or a verdict is just a decision. And, you know, so that's, that's the official definition there. So here's Levita, we'll get here plugged in a minute and uh, give, give her a little time here. Hi, Levita. Hi, Terry. Hey, we... I am in the car and I'm not alone, so I don't think this is going to work well. Okay, you sound good, though, so let me know if you can. You want I can't to hear you. Say it again. Uh, you can if you want to, but that's that's fine. We'll just, I got a lot of stuff from Black's Law Dictionary and from the scriptures and stuff, so. Yeah, and the Lord had given me two testimonies, one of a prevailing winning verdict and one where uh, we went through two days of trial. And, I, you know, he even reminded me of what the, ju what the judge said when I, um, when I, when we concluded two, two days of trial. So um, if I can call back in a few minutes, I will. I should be out of the car in about, 10 minutes. Okay, great. I just want to get your input on what a verdict is all about. Uh, according yeah, to yeah, I've got two testimonies that the Lord gave me as I was praying this morning. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay. See, see you in a bit. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> From Black's Law Dictionary, that you have several different types of verdicts that are listed. And I just wrote down some of the main ones. There's probably 20, 25 different verdicts that, that, you know, we just think guilty or not guilty, you know, right? <clears throat> That's the first two. Uh, <clears throat> again, when we're reading these, let's look at how we judge others, how we judge ourselves. In 1 Corinthians 6, we'll judge the world and judge the angels. So guilty, not guilty. Number three, guilty, but insane. <laughs> yeah, that's going to open up a whole new can of something. Uh, guilty but insane. Number four, if uh, you listen to Dr. Ron Horner, uh, he'll talk about a false verdict that isn't in line with the principles of justice. A false verdict is not in line with the principles of justice. In other words, he would say that's probably from the court of hell. Or I would probably add to that, that may be from the court of self-will. <laughs> what I want, how I think it should look, how I want it to work out. That is probably a false verdict and is not going to get you anywhere, but in deeper and deeper uh, uh, trouble. I could use a different word. <laughs> uh, an excessive verdict, number five, excessive verdict out of proportion to the matter in hand and violates to conscious to the conscious of the court let me read that again an excessive verdict is out of proportion to the matter in hand and violates the conscious of the court and so that's a pretty interesting one too so it's out all of a sudden we're judging and and, uh, you know, getting, rendering our unrighteous judgments and our unrighteous verdicts that are out of proportion violates the matter at hand, the matter that really 
uh, is the main issue of the thing and the conscious or the heart of the court or that petition. And so interesting stuff. This is right directly out of Black's Law Dictionary. Here's an interesting one. Verse or number six says, verdict subject to the opinion of the court. <laughs> verdict subject to the opinion of the court is subject to the decision of various points of law. So the, the final verdict is rendered due to precedence or what has happened before in, in as they establish the points of the law within a petition or, or, or a court case or as a precedent has been set. An excessive verdict out of proportion to the matter in hand. Uh, uh, see. No, that's verdict's opinion, subject to the opinion of the court. I'm sorry. Sustaining a verdict. This one, this one is very interesting. Sustaining a verdict. Uphold the verdict already delivered. Sustaining a verdict means upholding the verdict already delivered. So that's what I'm talking about. If we, when we get to the point where we have a uh, verdict rendered from a righteous judge, and the enemy would try to say things like that didn't work. It ain't going to happen. This has happened. You know, cancer has been in your bloodline for uh, uh, every generation up to you. It's going to happen in your life. No, you have to sustain the verdict. You have to uphold the verdict already delivered from the righteous judge because the righteous judge is speaking the truth. He does not lie. And so those are some interesting ones. There were several more that, that kind of caught my eye, but these were the main ones that really I felt like were, were interesting and uh, to not only the, the heavenly courts, but the courts in the natural and the courts, how we judge and how we render our unrighteous and righteous or righteous verdicts. I'm not saying all our judgments are unrighteous. We, we definitely have righteous verdicts we make and righteous judgments we make as well. But as we come into that mature, uh, perfect man, we'll be making more and more, as he is so we in this world, we'll be making more and more righteous judgments and righteous verdicts because we're not going to be listening to Facebook. We're going to be listening. We're not going to be listening to our friends, what they think, and then jumping on the bandwagon without hearing, you know, the, 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 the evidence of the opposing view. And so part of that is we need to listen to evidence instead of listen to some expert in the field that says this was this, this is that. And then we believe that blindly by, by not hearing the, the, the rest of the story kind of thing. So as we begin to move in that, the verdict, I think, is very part uh, key to our courtrooms of heaven court case. And that as we begin to understand that that's a very needed uh, element of the court that 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 we can go through an actual court case and and get his verdict because when he says uh, uh, something just as simple as not guilty, we can take that to the court and we know that all our generational bloodlines up in that point have been uh, uh, done away with, uh, have been dissolved, and we can use that as we go forward in the outworking of the verdict rendered from the righteous judge. So we become the, the one who enforces the verdicts we receive. A court order is just a piece of paper unless you put power behind it. Court order is just a piece of paper unless you put power behind it or enforce it. If the enemy is violating orders and verdicts that you have, have received, enforce them. Don't let him... Uh, he'll try. I've seen it happen so many, many times that that the enemy will try to come in and convince you that things didn't work, and we believe him. You know, it's like I didn't see anything happen. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds like your own thoughts, but it's the enemy speaking uh, thoughts to you that that well, that didn't work. I'm not going to do this again, or I'm not going to study. I'm not going to learn from my mistakes. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just try something else. I'm gonna go back to the old way I did things seemed like that was better Egypt was better than <laughs> Egypt was better than what I learned in the courtrooms of heaven but no don't give up because he wants you he knows that you'll be free and so he's going to do the best he can in most cases to keep you out of that freedom and that liberty that you get in the courtrooms of heaven so he's going to try to convince you 
over and over again that things are not working, things are not changing. But I love to see when things actually do start breaking. It's not every case that you're going to find uh, him attacking you like that. God is sovereign. A lot of times, a lot of testimonies we've had is, uh, have been people just immediately, like the widow woman and the unrighteous judge, immediately give uh, justice for me, render justice for me. And he says, okay, uh, you're free. Now, that happens a lot because God loves us approaching him in the courts of heaven. So we need to, but in a lot of cases, if they're multi-level uh, uh, generational things, we have to uh, consider that we're making headway. We have to consider there's probably more to the story. Don't dive in. You're just removing layer upon layer upon layer. You're going to start seeing more and more breakthrough as you go through the courts, as, you, as he renders verdict for each particular layer, each particular p p uh, petition, you're going to start seeing more and more freedom that you didn't have before. And the good thing about it is not only you will be free, but your generation, your future generations will be free as well. We're the, we're the ones, we're the ambassadors that stops the, the buck right here. So uh, anytime uh, the enemy is violating orders, a false verdict or whatever, take them back to the, to the judge, ask them to be held in contempt of court. Uh, I don't do that too much. I, I find that to me, it's just layer upon layer upon layer because I don't get back into uh, a warfare mentality. I go straight to seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the father where I govern uh, as a legislative and judicial son. But so I just step back into the courts of heaven and deal with everything that gives Satan a legal right to continue to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, instead of restraining orders, contempt of court orders, I, I, I just keep it real simple. <laughs> so, I, I like things simple. And so, uh, uh, you know, it's just ours. It's just ours for the taking. It's ours for, for uh, believing. It's ours for our legal right to have the courtrooms of heaven uh, uh, available to us anytime uh, we need to step into, into the courts. Uh, I want to go into some, you know, move into some of the things we can do uh, to make it personal. Like we're talking about how, how does this affect me when I'm judging myself? I'm rendering verdicts for myself, either unrighteous verdicts or, unri or righteous verdicts. And how does it look when I'm judging others? Uh, and rendering my own verdict according to my self-will, uh, an unrighteous verdict or a versus a uh, righteous verdict. So I've got some scriptures for you that I've had for a long time, and and I think it's powerful because I want to. I, I like to, you know, a lot of this always de depends on us first. We're always you're always focusing on me first, me in the course, I have to be clean before I can begin to function as a judge over the world or over the angels. So let's make it personal for a moment. Here's, uh, here's uh, 1 Corinthians 6 from the Amplified Bible. Does anyone of you, when he has a complaint, a civil dispute, with another believer dare to go to the law before unrighteous men, non-believers, instead of placing the issue before the saints of God. Do you not know that the saints, God's people, will one day judge the world? If the world is to be judged by you, are you not competent to try trivial, insignificant, petty cases? Yes. Do you not know that we believers will judge the angels? How much more than matters of this life? One thing I would, would say about that is I don't quite really agree with verse two. It says, do you not know that the saints, uh, God's people will one day judge the world? Most of the translations say one day, like puts that off to a future time. Well, Yahweh spoke to me. I was I was concerned about some very key court cases that people were wondering if I was or have, would build a team to uh, to legislate over some very serious matters. 
And the Lord says about the scripture, he said, well, Terry, you're doing that every day. You're rendering your own unrighteous verdicts. You're rendering your own unrighteous verdicts and judgments. And, and so that's not going to happen. I believe it will more fully at a, at a future time. But he said, we're, gonna, we're doing that right now. And in those issues, we were going to put together a team and said, you wouldn't be able to find a, an unbiased person because they've already rendered their unrighteous verdict or, or judgment. And they've already rendered their own unrighteous uh, judgment and verdict. So they, uh, we had to stop. We said, okay, we didn't get to go ahead by God. We, <laughs> we, we know that there would not be an unrighteous. It would be in the operating in the courts of self-will. They would be seek. They would not be seeking an inquiry of the Lord to find out what His heart is concerning the matter. Very serious cases in both both of those times we were to do that. So uh, I always inquire of the Lord before a court case: Is do I have standing in the court to to address this situation? I have international standing around the world because of what what we do. But uh, my zeal and passion just to petition the courts of heaven for something does not necessarily give me uh, uh, approval or permission or a mandate so i have to be careful there not to outstep my my boundaries and and do only what i see my father do and so that's a pretty pretty powerful uh scripture when we tend to make it personal about judging myself and judging others and we need to to hear both sides of the story, ask permission, uh, and, and then only proceed when he gives us permission. Second uh, Peter 2, chapter 2, 12 through 14 in the Message Bible says, but these people like unreasoning beasts, mere creatures of instinct, born only to be captured and destroyed, railing at things of which they are ignorant, they shall utterly perish in their own corruption. In their destroying, they shall surely be destroyed. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty tough scripture right there. These people like unreasoning beasts. So they don't have any, they don't have any wisdom for, for logic. And they don't have any uh, searching of the Lord, inquiring of the Lord for his wisdom, his, his input, his his heart, his will, his matter in the case. So it's a wonder, it's a dying, uh, destroying, a perishing uh, in their own corruption and in, in our corruption in all of our self will. And so it's uh, dangerous to do anything according to our self will. And when we think we're so right, you know, we have to check again is that a spirit of religion? Is that pride? Or is that me exceeding my boundaries of where I actually have a mandated authority over? A lot of questions can come into mind when we go and look at things that way. So 2 Peter 2, 12 through 14 is kind of a warning <laughs> bell going off. Ding, ding, ding. Hey, we don't want this to happen. Uh, we don't want to be unreasoning beasts, mere creatures of instinct born, you know, uh, to be captured and stay in prison and railing at things, you know, expressing our voice, expressing our opinion, expressing our own will, our need to be right, expressing, <laughs> you know, just talking, talking, talking without any wisdom and, and counseling from the Lord and doing what I only see my father do. Let's see. Let's move on to more happy things. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, 13, there's more weight. Uh, being destined to receive punishment as reward of their unrighteousness. See, we're talking about righteous verdicts, righteous judgments, but there's a reward for our unrighteousness. Or there's a reward for our, our righteous verdicts. There's a reward for our righteous judgments. There's a reward for our, our unrighteous verdicts. And there's a reward for our unrighteous judgments. So sowing and reaping, you know, the problem with that, when we do that, we're the one doing it. So we are sowing into something we shouldn't be sowing and we're going to reap something we shouldn't be sowing in our own personal life and making it personal. We'll skip on down that. 
last one. You got the point. Exodus 23, 1. You shall not circulate a false report. Do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. <laughs> How often do we do something like that? Just talking, casual talking, maybe gossip, maybe, you know, talking about somebody, a minister, you know, we, we want to share our thoughts and somebody has an ear. Well, we want to, we want to make sure they hear uh, the good and the bad and the ugly. So you will, you shall not circulate a false report. Do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. That just secondly, it implies to me that we're standing in a courtroom, uh, 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 courtroom, whether we know it or not, we're standing in a, as an unrighteous or a righteous witness in a court system, whether we know we're actually there or not. Deuteronomy 25, 15, for all who do such things, all who behave unrighteously are an abomination to the Lord your God. For all who do such things, all who behave unrighteously. I think, you know, get back to the Enoch flight school thing. Righteousness was a key for Enoch to, to receive such overwhelming, enormous favor from Yahweh that that caused him to skip death. I think he was a prototype for righteous living, righteous judgments, righteous verdicts. He taught, he was a scribe of righteousness. So, so he taught his family uh, uh, the power of living a righteous life where, where we judged righteously instead of unrighteously. Isaiah 10, one says, woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees. Now we don't consciously go around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna declare this unrighteous decree. But what if it is a, out of the government of self-will? That would be an unrighteous decree. Anybody else have any idea what an unrighteous decree would be? What about if we're just in agreement with something in our heart that's unrighteous? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What if we're in agreement with somebody that that. Uh, that is famous and we think they wrote a book and we think they should know so we get in agreement with what they say without doing any research and without inquiring of the lord maybe we were rendering an unrighteous decree based on that belief system so things to think about when we're looking at this personally isaiah 55 6 and 7 i just got a couple more of these and we'll just chat about some stuff and open up the comments Isaiah 55 6 and 7 seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts mm. <laughs> I'm guilty Lord I repent <laughs> you know the biggest thing to do right here is just say I'm guilty I repent that's the key to the courtrooms of heaven whether you think you committed those those things I, somewhere in my generational bloodline, I, we're guilty. So I'm guilty. Uh, it's in my DNA. I'm guilty. I repent. Father, restore to me uh, uh, your 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 kingdom. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy. There's a good courtroom word. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Don't you love that? That's some good courtroom scripture right there. Zephaniah 3.13. I think I've got a couple, even uh, New Testament, so it's not all gloom and doom. <laughs> Zephaniah 3.13. The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. So we're told right here, lies, deceitful tongue, speaking deceitful things shall be, uh, that are in our mouth is unrighteousness. Amen. Moving on to the New Testament, Luke 16, 8 through 10. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly for the sons of the world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. I think that's a that's a 
that's a really thought provoking scripture when we look at that the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly but for the sons of this world are more shrewd in the generation than the sons of light it should be the other way around he should be he should be applauding us and con congratulating us for for being uh 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 uh, a, a just steward and so i want to look at things like how am i stewarding my heart how am i stewarding my mouth how am i stewarding my my uh mindsets how am i stewarding my actions how am i stewarding the words that come out of my mouth if i'm as he is so am i in this world i have to change some ways i'm uh, i've been doing things for my entire lifestyle and if I just begin to listen to myself, I find some things like, God, that's old. That's, that doesn't fit with the righteous uh, uh, ambassador that I am. That doesn't fit with as he is, so am I in this world. So I have to uh, enter into the courtrooms of heaven to begin to engage in repentance in, in a court case and look at the, uh, the, from the other side of the story, the righteous, righteousness of, of the Lord and i say to you make friends for yourself unrighteous mammon that when you fail they may receive you into an everlasting home he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much so uh, there's no sin there's no big sin there's no little sin right that's what i see about that but the first part of that make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon that just doesn't make sense to me i haven't figured out that scripture yet maybe some of you have we can talk about it in a minute make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon uh we'll just see where that goes <laughs> i've got some ideas on it uh from talking to some friends about it but uh, uh my my thoughts on that is by no means complete and so I'd like to hear your thoughts on that as well. So we'll, we'll, there's a couple more scriptures and we'll, we'll talk about it. Let's see. John 7, 18. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true and no unrighteousness is in him. There we go. This is the gold. This is the good stuff. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. In other words, if you see me, you see the Father. You're not seeking to, you know, impress people how much you know uh, uh, of your own opinion or your own need to be right. You are an, an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven, a governmental, legislative, and judicial ambassador. And uh, I think the more we are matured into operating, functioning that way, I think the more we'll see uh, this being fulfilled. You know, the scripture says, uh, the, the God of this world is coming and he has found nothing in me. So I want that, and, you know, I want, I want to live that. So it's like, I don't have to engage in warfare. He has nothing in common with in me. So I have to do with those things that pop up uh, maybe four or five times a day that I need to deal with in the courts of heaven. It might take three minutes to deal with and you're done with it. Let's see. Romans 1 18 says for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppresses the truth in unrighteousness. Interesting, huh? All wrath of God. That's new Testament. There's Levita, she's back. Let's let her get on here. Romans 1, 18 is similar to the wrath of God against un ungodliness and unrighteousness. Read that. We'll get into what Levita has to say in just a moment. If she gets down, activated. Uh but a lot of things we we're talking about in the scriptures had to do, we'll, we'll maybe hit some more, but, but welcome back, Levita. Thank you. It's okay. a little, it's a little hectic here, but I'm yeah. here. 
Well, it's hectic everywhere. That's good. Yeah. Good to have you back. Uh, Levita, while you're here, we just want to interrupt here. And, and uh, I'm really interested in hearing your perspective about uh, the verdict in the courts of the natural, how it relates to the verdict rendered from the righteous judge. And you can share your testimonies too as well. We're going through some scriptures, making it personal, not so much how it, it uh, looks in a court case of heaven, uh, but how it can affect us. And uh, 1 Corinthians 6, don't you know you'll judge the world and judge the angels? From a personal perspective about uh, judging ourselves unrighteously or uh, righteously, or judging others uh, with an unrighteous judgment and an unrighteous verdict, or a righteous judgment and a righteous verdict. So we're making it personal, personable. And so, but I want to hear your thoughts on, on, the, on the verdict rendered. We gave several ex examples right out of Black's Law Dictionary that you probably know of. And, and so uh, uh, just share what's on your heart. It... Okay, well, when I began to reflect on uh, this session for this evening, and I began to listen to Holy Spirit, he reminded me of uh, different cases where there had been in the natural courts um, judgments or verdicts rendered. And then I just kept listening uh, for what he wanted me to share. And it basically was uh, distinguishing between a prevailing verdict and one where um, the decision was not in favor of my client. And so then I began to um, liken that unto what happens in the courts of heaven. But when we're in the courts of heaven, then I said, well, we prevail um, because of the blood of Jesus and because our sins have been blotted out and uh, they are no longer written against us. So um, when I began to think about the cases where God showed me uh, winning verdicts, uh, it made me smile in one instance, of course, because of the outcome and then everything that resulted from that. I had a, a breach of contract cause of action and that was like a three-day trial uh, in the county court, the circuit court. And in prevailing, uh, there were strategies that God gave me that caused us to prevail, to present the right evidence. And the judge was favoring us. He was very much favoring us. And as a result of that um, prevailing verdict, the rendered judgment in favor of my client, um, myself and the judge became friends and uh, we started you know doing a commute together on the um, train to go downtown to the office and there was several days a week we would ride together and then ultimately he began to mentor me so out of that prevailing verdict and that or that judgment that was rendered God just brought all that back to my remembrance now there was a trial where um, we, we had a trial against the Internal Revenue Service. My client, I do employment discrimination. And so my client had worked 25 years for the IRS. And this is, this is what God wanted me to say to you all. At the end of a two-day trial in the midst of a snowstorm in Chicago, eight hours each day, eight witnesses in two days, multiple depositions leading up to the trial. The judge said when he was ready to render the verdict, this was employment discrimination, allegedly. He said, it's not that you weren't discriminated against, it's that you didn't prove it. That's when I thought of the blood of Jesus being our evidence that always causes us to prevail. He said, all of the evidence that you presented did not prove the discrimination. And it was like a ball dropped and, you know, it was a pin 
It was so silent in the room. This was at the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and it was an administrative judge. And it's what I do, you know, it's, it's what I do with the employment law cases. Uh, they are either in federal court or they're at state agencies. And so in reflecting on those two cases, I, um, I said, well, the, the only application that I could take from that was that we always win in the courts of heaven. Now, something you wrote recently, Terry, um, had me really reflecting on it because it's not always instant and immediate. You have to keep coming back. And that's why even Jesus gave the parable in Luke chapter 18, where he said, this unjust judge, he said, look, if you, you're gonna keep on coming. And the woman was determined to get a, a verdict. She was determined to get a judgment in her favor. And he said, I better go ahead and consider this. I don't regard man or God, you know, He's like, who is this woman? Why does she keep coming? And so her persistency paid off, but Jesus used that as a parable. And how many years did we overlook that as it relates to the courts of heaven? We never saw that as Man. related in any way to the courts of heaven, not in any way. Yeah, here's Until God awakened us. Here's a scripture I posted the other day. It's like, uh, uh, and I mentioned it briefly here tonight, but uh, remember this word. If you don't see immediate results in the courtrooms of heaven petitions, you are making headway and removing deeply, deeply rooted legal rights. So don't allow the accuser to say courtrooms of heaven. Nothing happened, happen. right. That was, deep, that was deeply impacting when I read it because it's so true. Now, let me tell you, the trial, there's one more trial I have to tell you about, but the trials, you don't just go, you don't just get your day in court and you're done. The trial process can take three or four years. The case that I just got finished describing at the EEOC, I'm just saying, uh, and the, the, the breach of contract, there were multiple court appearances, multiple in both of those cases, long before we got to the day of a verdict. Mm. And so you don't quit, you don't give up, don't let the enemy, Terry is on it, he's on it. He just wrote that last week, I think. Uh, don't let the enemy trick you out of the purpose for which you came. Listen, settle it in your heart and mind that you have already won. You already won. It's just that we have an enemy who's unseen and he's a legalist and God can't violate his own laws. He will not. And so with the legalist uh, in, the, in the adversary of our soul, he's there and the Bible tells us, Old and New Testament, he's accusing us. And everyone who tries to explain away the lack of need for the courts of heaven, this, and Terry used to say it a lot. Well, how's that working for you? <laughs> How, how's that working for you? It's I'm not. hearing your prayers. Are you getting answered? Yeah, but that's the way I was taught. Yeah. So the one last case, this one we won. This was in federal court. This was, and this was with two of my business partners. It was a team of us. Now in the IRS case, there were a team of two attorneys. I had a co-counsel. IRS had co-counsel. So it was two attorneys on both sides. In this case, it was all three of us, my two of my business partners, Mayo. That was my first partnership. So, no, that was my second partnership. I beg your pardon. We had a case against Commonwealth Edison. Now, Commonwealth Edison, I love the word Commonwealth because it comes from England and it has a biblical purpose. And it, it even is uh, fully manifested. I'm not on a, a rabbit trail or bunny trail. The Commonwealth was manifested in the book of Acts when they all had no need because they had all spread the wealth. That's Commonwealth. Okay, that was a sidebar. 
<laughs> so the case that we had and prevailed was another employment case. Now, um, my, my law partners, my former law partners, they did employment law as well. We took this case on against um, the energy supplier in Illinois. And our, our employee, our client had worked for the energy company for a very long time. But he had been um, allegedly perceived, and this is the law, it's the, just the way the law is written. He had been perceived as having a disability. And we had to, we had to prove that it was an erroneous perception. And we won. And the electric supplier appealed. So we wound up in the court of appeals. It was so exciting, but we prevailed in both cases and then finally got back to the court, the federal district court. We were able to get our day in court because our day in court was cut off at trial because they tried to, uh, they did a, what's called a, a motion at the end after the verdict. And so that is when the judge, after ruling in our favor, then they immediately filed an appeal. And so then we had to go, you only have a certain number of days to respond and all of that. But there we were proving that they had erroneously perceived our client to, to be disabled when he was not disabled. And it was affecting his job performance, his function, his assignments and all of all of that. So, uh, when you get a favorable judgment, um, and that's what we always expect in the courts of heaven, because of the blood of Jesus and because of the Book of Life, our names are in the Book of Life because we believe Jesus lived, died, hung, bled, was resurrected. We believe that for ourselves individually and personally and when you believe that individually and personally you win you absolutely win mm -hmm. and so those are natural uh examples of verdicts and judgments that have been rendered but this the 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 multiple scriptures that talk about don't judge lest you be judged let me tell you that judgment is a good thing when its outcome is redemptive. And that is the purpose for judgment. It's redemptive. And it's not supposed to leave people feeling uh, rejected, inadequate, uh, shamed. No, our judgment, the judgment that God is calling us to render as co-legislators is redemptive judgment. It's not condemnation. It's not shame. It's not rejection. It is a redemptive act of God. And we get to co-reign and co-legislate with him. And we're not called to condemn our sisters and brothers in Christ. And neither those that have yet to confess Christ. We're not called to condemn them. We, our assignment is to bring them into redemption. And that's what we have to remember about judgments and verdicts that are rendered. Yeah, that's so good, Levita. Thank you. Because we were talking earlier. One of the things I found out in uh, Black's Law Dictionary when I looked up verdict was sustaining a verdict. And it means uphold the verdict already delivered. If we do that in the natural, how much more in the spiritual realm? Exactly. Because <laughs> it's exactly. a mirror image of spiritual principles. So we need to sustain the verdict. Uh, the, the scripture that I gave a moment ago was Exodus 23, 29, 30, uh, that when we don't see immediate results, Yahweh often, our righteous judge, often gives us immediate results like the widow woman. I love it when we get immediate results, but there are times in deeply, root, uh, deeply rooted cases, there are layers upon layers, so layers here's what, here's what has to happen exodus 23 29 through 30 i will not drive them out from before you in one year 
Yes, that the was land. the perfect scripture you chose. Yes, perfect. lest perfect. the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. In other words, when I did the study on until, until is a gateway portal threshold word. So what I saw when I saw until written there, you have to increase until you have increased and you inherit the land. So you have to have this mental consciousness about you and this mental faith, this mental ambassador uh, a consciousness about you that I'm increasing. The kingdom of heaven is advancing in me and I'm becoming that legislative and judicial son. I'm governing as I go. And little by little, as you increase, God will drive them out before you not in one year, but in however long it takes. Whatever, yeah, however long it takes, little by little, because he, he gave the, uh, the reverse picture of that is that they're all dry, driven out at once. You're looking at desolation. Yeah. yeah. Someone needs to mute their line. I get it. Yeah, we dealt with a, a drought up in Northern California. And uh, it took four years. Beautiful. You know, the now, choice of scripture perfect, was perfect. perfectly clear day uh, with Grant Mahoney and Samantha Mahoney came taught us about the courts of heaven. And at the end of our court session, we did related to the drought, this little cloud came over and started raining. The cloud was about the size of a man's house, about as big as our house we were in. And it's rain. It's like God winking at us saying, you guys did it. Hang on. Wait, it's going to happen. To you know, a couple of weeks later, uh, this major storm comes and and the water levels in the, the lakes rose like 25, 27 inches. That was a major difference. But still, they, the, the weather channels did not announce that the drought is over. We're still under a drought. And then four years later, here come, you know, all the lakes there are fed by snowmelt. So here comes this massive snow in the wintertime, 60 feet plus snow that that just fills up the lake so it took four years that we had to stand on this scripture we never went back in the courts of heaven but we stood on this scripture and finally one day the the newscasters the weather people were saying the drought is over now they're back in it uh, there's a cycle going on up there now that that you know i pray that the god has governmental legislative and judicial uh, sons there in position to handle that again uh, it's not my mandate this time. There's other Amen. things. Amen. So, and that's the thing. We must know what it is that Yahweh, what is Papa giving us to do? We can't take on an assignment that does not belong to us. We can get in a lot of spiritual entanglement. I mean, the negative kind of spiritual entanglement. There's wonderful, uh, purposeful, intentional spiritual entanglement with holy spirit but if you get entangled in an assignment with dark spirits you're yeah you're going deeper in the wrong direction yeah that's so true we don't want to go there it's just it's uh, it opens up the door for seven times worse exactly and we do not want to go there so we want to operate in wisdom always always inquire of the lord and get his permission his, his permission granted is a mandate Amen. Access granted. Access granted. I've got a couple of these out of Black Law. If you have a couple more minutes, I want to ask you about a couple of these uh, verdicts from Black's Law Dictionary. Sure. I had a, an, an opinion, but uh, so here's one. One I found. Verdict subject to the opinion of the court. It means subject to the decision of various points of law. So you're asking me to speak to that? Yeah, verdict, uh, verdict. The title was verdict subject to the opinion of the court. So yeah. the opinion is the written decision. So that opinion may be written by more than one judge together. Oh. And so it's a corporate opinion. So like the bench of three in the appellate court, there's three judges on one bench, oh. but they, they have one corporate opinion with sometimes there's of course 
a dissenting judge. But that opinion, the verdict that's rendered is subject to the opinion. And that just means what did the court write? Wow. That to me looks like governing hubs, how a governing hub would work. Exactly. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it all depends on what the court wrote. So in terms of legal research, we have to read the opinions and get an understanding of what the opinion said. Yeah. It, even much. just to understand what the verdict is about. Yeah. And then how to carry it out. That's the other part that we should teach a little bit more about is how do we carry this verdict out in the earth as co-legislative sons? How do we carry these out? How do we implement what the verdict was that was rendered in the court's heaven? That's another, well, we've touched on it a lot, but not like a course or whatever, yeah, but yeah. It, it is a matter of understanding what to do with the verdict when you get it. Yeah. I was told, I, maybe you told me that years ago that when a, when a court issues, a judge issues a verdict, there has to be an agency that enforces the verdict. Or exactly. Nothing. And so we become the agency who enforces the verdict. Exactly. The judgment does you absolutely no good if you do nothing with it. <laughs> and so, even in the uh, situation with a collection, uh, let's say you get a judgment against someone for $20,000 and then you go home and you're happy, you won the case, you got a judgment for 20 grand. Well, what's next? You have to collect on it. Duh. Yeah. You get the judgment, you won the case, and then you go home and you sit down and just have a party and do nothing. So you got to collect the 20000 It's not going to just fall from the sky. That's another whole proceeding before a different judge, a completely different case to collect on the judge. That's deep. Yeah, that's a good one. Here's another one. You, you, you. I, 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 I'm going to go in one minute. I've got another meeting, but go ahead. I'm listening. Okay. False verdict. And Dr. Ron Horner talk about the courts of hell, but I like to call it the courts of self-will. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That isn't in line with principles of justice. That's the definition that Blacks the gave. The false verdict. Yeah. yeah. False verdict. Well, and so Go ahead. if I could speak to that, you want me to speak to that? Yes, please. Okay. The false verdicts come from an unjust judge, like the one we were just talking about in Luke 18. So... The judge can have all of the evidence pre presented and then rule in, a, in such a way that it doesn't uh, align with the evidence. And that's where appeals come in. But, but the party that would be in a disagreement with the judge has to prove that the judge made an error. That's what the appeal is about. You have to prove that the judge gave a false verdict and why would the verdict be false? It's false because the evidence proves the exact opposite of what the judge ruled. Yeah, wow. Who would the false judge be? Satan, the accuser, right? In the courts of heaven, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But see, when, when, we, if we, are, when we are in the courts of heaven, we expect that the, the just judge would never render a false verdict. Right, never now, will. The enemy, neither can he, this is one thing that, that people that are new to courts of heaven have to get settled. The enemy can't lie in the presence of God. He cannot. That's why Jesus spoke Matthew 5, 25. He said, go ahead and agree with the fool. I mean, well, you know, the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> agree with him while he's in your way, lest you wind up in prison. Yeah. And that's yeah. bondage. What? More bondage. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be the physical prison because we're talking about spiritual matters. You can wind up in more bondage than you started out with. Amen. You know, I questioned Yahweh about that. Uh, the father of lies. You know, we, we believe he always lies. So he's going to lie in the courtrooms of heaven. 
And I months went by. I was inquiring of the Lord, what is going on here? Because, you know, we're answering the accusations directly from Satan and the demonic entities that show up against us. And 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 he said, Terry, the 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 it goes back to Ezekiel one, the wheels within the wheels where the mobile court touches the earth. That's where Satan can enter into. He can't go into heaven because he's been cast out. But uh, it goes into saying that that uh, uh, Yahweh said that he he is the father of lies, but he is not permitted to lie in the courts of heaven. All he is doing is presenting evidence. That's it. And it can't it can't be untruthful. Right. Because no lie can tarry in the presence of God. Man, that's why Matthew 5, 25, Jesus himself. Exactly. Agree with your adversary quickly. And that is saying, I'm guilty. I'm yeah. repenting. And so, but, but what we're confessing is, I don't even know what my ancestors did, but it's in my DNA. And I agree with the adversary. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Next time I'll be back. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Anybody have any comments you'd like to add to that? That was uh, so rich. Have her share some of her thoughts there with us and jump in with us. So uh, I think that helps us with the verdict. You know, what we can handle, not only the courts of heaven, but how we judge ourselves, how we judge others and, and, uh, all the things around us that, that are swirling and causing chaos and how we look at those things from a, from a righteous uh, judgment. Uh, judgment also means restoration or redemptive, what she said. So I always look at judgment from a righteous standpoint. How can I judge this righteously to bring restoration? Rather than, you know, another thing Yahweh said is like, if I'm agreeing with the, accuser of the brethren uh i'm just perpetuating darkness if that is in my heart my heart creates more than my mouth does so if the, what is in my heart is agreeing with the accuser of the brethren i'm just perpetuating darkness we're sons of light so we need to be be uh our heart motives our heart and mindsets need to be focused on uh, a redemptive process, a process of restoration where we're, where we're governing uh, uh, righteous judgments instead of unrighteous judgments and verdicts. Amen. Anybody have any comments? I know why this one was just glowing. You know, it's like I had to thought a couple of days ago, verdicts, verdicts, verdicts. And then this morning when I was uh, before I went fishing, it was like, ah, this thing was just wah, wah. <laughs> it's like exploding in my heart, you know, to talk about the verdicts. And so glad to have uh, 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 LaVita join with us. Amen. Any questions, comments? So good to see you guys. It's thought provoking, isn't it? You know, start looking at things differently. And that's what Yahweh's been doing with me is just cause me to look at everything differently. Absolutely everything. The way I think, the way I speak, what's in my heart about a situation before I do speak, because I'm creating from my heart as well. The actions I take, I, I want to make sure they're not unrighteous acts. And even the words that I speak out of my mouth uh or have to be from a righteous perspective that as a as a uh, governing legislative and judicial son i think we're we're, we're in for quite a transition <laughs> to to become the fullness of as he is so am i in this world you're welcome you're welcome thank you guys for showing up tonight and uh we'll see you soon that was great. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So uh, want to hear some reports next week. We'll come back and maybe talk some more. I, I'm going to start asking for more testimonies. And Diana had some there tonight before we went live. Just come in 15 minutes early. 
I'm going to have some worship music going. I like to just chit chat before we get going and, and do a little worship. I had some worship mob going on. And, and, uh, so, uh, if you're around a little earlier, come on in and there'll be probably some worship music going on, just a little chat, kind of get to know you meet and greet kind of thing. So I like doing that too. So God bless you guys. Thank you for showing you up. You too. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Have an awesome week. You too. Bye.